In January of 2020, I took a trip to Cuba. With Cuba coming back into the news recently, uh, I've been thinking more and more about that trip that I took. I've been thinking about the country, the island of Cuba. And I've been thinking about the Cuban people. You see, I wasn't hidden away in some beach resort, uh, you know, drinking Cuba Libres all day. I was in the city of Havana. I spent a week there, and in today's video, I want to talk about that. I want to talk about some of the good things I saw, some of the bad things I saw. I want to talk about five of the things that shocked me about my visit to Cuba. The first one's a bit unfortunate, but it's, it's honestly the first thing that shocked me. So, uh, the lack of supplies. Some things that we take for granted. You will be surprised when you go to Cuba when you see some of the things that are lacking. So this is me filming, that's my dad on the left, and those two little buns that he's holding, that's all that we could buy from this Cuban bakery. Uh, you can see they have a menu that actually has two or three different items, but in reality, those buns are all they could sell us. And this is a bakery in the center of Havana. They just don't have the supplies. They don't have any selection other than the most basic of white buns. So seeing that was a pretty eye-opening moment for me. Things like toothpaste and toothbrushes, they exist, but they are maybe not quite luxury items, but they are definitely harder to find than they would be in, you know, any other place that you might think of. Uh, books, for example, it's very hard for the average Cuban to get any newer book or any book, period. And if you're someone who wants to make an impact in some way, and there's some things like that that are affordable for you. You know, I would especially recommend books because knowledge is power. Uh, but maybe do a bit of research and find some things like toiletries or, you know, towels or sunglasses, little accessories that are just like, not food, but something just like above that in terms of, you know, nice to have items. You might meet some Cubans who appreciate that. The second thing that shocked me about Cuba and this is something more positive. Especially in the evenings, you will not believe the life that you see on the streets. Like all the Cubans talk with their neighbors. Like really, like talk. And like late in the night, they have their bottles of rum and they're drinking, and that's another thing. That didn't surprise me at all, but uh, yeah, Cubans, they love their rum in Cuba, that's for sure. But it did surprise me that, like, frankly, any time of day or night, you see kids playing together, you see them playing baseball on the streets with little, uh, I don't know, like little crumpled up plastic or whatever, and they're like hitting it with sticks. They're, that's why they're so good at baseball, man. Like, they're literally practicing with sticks and pieces of paper. And then I saw, you know, there was this game of dominoes on the street near where I was staying. And I passed it every day for like three or four days in a row. And then they would always kind of like look at me and smile, but I was too shy to like stop and talk to them. And finally, like the last day I had the courage to stop and watch for a bit. And they sat me down and I played, I played dominoes with them. They put me in the game and then they were like teaching me how to play dominoes and... Suddenly I was part of the community. Like they, they weren't looking at me like, oh, here's a tourist, take your photo and get out of there. They, they just saw me and they were like, all right, like get in there. Like you're one of us now. You're, you're living here on this street with us. You're one of us. And that's really the Cuban spirit. And I, I'll talk more about that later or stick around till the end. I have a good story about that. The third thing that shocked me and it, okay, this one is, we're, get, we're getting a bit deeper here, okay? I talked about, those are the first couple things you notice when you're in Havana. This third one, this took me a while to figure out. And I only really learned it when I met a Cuban guy named Luis Fidel. And Luis Fidel is an English teacher in Havana. But he lives in another part of Havana, like far from the touristy area that I was in. 
and he comes to Old Havana basically to practice his English. So like he found me and my dad and he wanted to talk with us. To be honest, at first, like I was apprehensive. I, I thought, you know, maybe it's a, a scam or something. And, and that's, that's not any statement against Cubans. That's just like, I've traveled a lot. And when someone is approaching you and you don't know them, you always need to be like a little bit like, are they trying to get money from me? But Luis Fidel, he wasn't. He was just, uh, you know, we talked to him for a while and he was, <laughs> he's an English teacher at a, at a kid's school but his English is not great. I mean, it's okay, he can speak English, but it's not perfect. And he comes to the touristy area to meet tourists and to practice his English. And me and my dad were happy to, you know, we bought him a coffee, we sat together for a while, and it was, it was good for him and it was great for us because like what other chance do we have to really speak to a local Cuban? And we asked Luis Fidel what he thinks about Old Havana. And it turns out he doesn't like it. He, what he said was, this is just fake. This is just what the government wants to show the tourists. Like, this isn't Cuba. At least, you know, that's his words. It's not my words, it's his words. He said, that's, this isn't Cuba. This isn't, you know. So I explained, you know, I have a YouTube channel. I like to travel. I like to explore cultures. What's the country you know? Can I see the country you know? Can I maybe see the school that you work at? And he was open to it. He wrote down his address of the school. He told us when he was working there. And he's like, if you want to come, if you and your dad want to visit our school, you know, the students would like that too. A chance to meet a couple of Canadians. So, I mean, I was a bit nervous. I was still like, is this a scam? Like, am I going to like show up there and just get robbed? You know, can you imagine? Wait a second. Ah, you got me. <laughs> you got me. Um... But no, like he was a genuine guy. We had spoken for an hour. I, under, I could, you could, you can just feel it sometimes. Like there was nothing. So we did it. We did it. We went to this school, uh, and I'll get to that in a second. But like just to be clear, the third thing that shocked me about Cuba is like really there's there's two Cubas. There's the tourist side of Cuba, and then. You know, do I want to call it the real Cuba? That's kind of a cliche, like, because uh, that, that implies that something nice isn't real anymore. I'm not saying the touristy zone isn't real. I'm just saying there's what the tourist sees, and then there's another reality that most Cubans are living in. So that's the third thing that shocked me. And now I got to tell the story of how I got to the school. So uh, <laughs> we were in this taxi. We gave him the address and he's looking at us like, what, what are you going here for, you know? Uh, but we got in, we got, he, he drove us there. Probably cost like 15 bucks just to get the taxi ride there. And the taxi driver, he's like giving us his phone number. He's like, call me when you need to come back. Because in his mind, he's like, yeah, this is a good expensive ride. Like, I want to I wanna pick these guys up again. We, all right, we took the guy, we took his card and then we, we left and we met Luis Fidel and we went to this school. No, no short, short. The uniforms. No bathing suits. <laughs> no, uh, okay, pajamas. Yeah. And the school was the fourth thing that shocked me. And it shocked me for a few different reasons, but the main reason that it shocked me was the name of the school was Escu... My Spanish is so bad. Escuela... Escuela... Abraham Lincoln. The school was named Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> and they had pictures of Lincoln. There was a picture of Lincoln, uh, of course, it's named after him, the American president. And me as a Canadian, I couldn't figure this out. I'm like, w wait, like I thought, I thought the Cuban leaders didn't like America. Like what's, why do they have pictures of Abraham Lincoln next to pi pictures of Castro next to Che Guevara? Like this doesn't make sense. But my dad, who knows his history, he pointed out, like, listen, it's Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves in America. So he is remembered as someone who stands for justice and stands for a revolution of sorts. Like, he is a revolutionary figure in American history. And whether he is Cuban or American or whatever, it doesn't matter. He's someone who led positive change, led a revolution, and it's that spirit that the Cubans are attracted to. And that's why he's a hero even in Cuba. 
And that was a big shock for me, like probably the biggest of all of them. Like, wow, I'm in Havana, I'm at a school and it's called Abraham Lincoln. Like what, what, are, what are the chances? I actually wanted to make a whole video about the school, but Luis Fidel's, uh, you know, Luis Fidel worked there, but there was a principal of the school and he talked to the principal and uh, she was very friendly as well, but she didn't know like what the YouTube channel was. She didn't know who I was. And so she didn't want to get in trouble, you know. Basically, she said, like, you can take some short photos with your cell phone, but like, no, don't, don't make a professional looking video. Like, that's, they just didn't want that. So I'm going to respect the privacy. I'm not going to, like, tell you, show you everything from the school. But, you know, like, here's a photo. That's me. <laughs> that's my dad in the back. That's Luis Fidel. These are some of the school kids. And... For the kids, I think like they were very curious to talk to me and my dad. I don't know if they'd ever met a Canadian before. And again, this is this is the other reality. Like if you're in old Havana, the shopkeepers, like every one of them meets a Canadian every day because they're like they're selling to Canadians, you know? In this other school, just, you know, 20 minute taxi ride away, a Canadian suddenly it's like, "Oh, like wh where are you from? You're like from another planet." The final thing, the fifth thing that shocked me uh, and, and this isn't a huge shock because I've already mentioned a couple times the people there are genuine. I, I kind of expected that, but what I didn't fully understand was people in Cuba are, they're still like full of joy. They're still, despite all of these hardships, despite the economic un, what's the word, unfairness, inequality, the injustice that I've been talking about through this video, all the problems, the buildings that need to be repaired, the hard-working teachers who deserve more money, the lack of ability to get things like books for teachers. A teacher can't even get books. Despite all of that, there's a joy to the Cubans who you meet, and that's why I strongly recommend you to visit and to spend time just wandering the streets. I never felt out unsafe for a moment. That's another thing I was worried about, like safety, because I, I film with, you know, kind of nice camera here and I never felt unsafe for a minute, day or night. I'm not exaggerating, I never felt unsafe. <laughs> and I didn't feel like everyone was trying to get my money. There's some countries you go to and you feel like everywhere you go you're just a walking ATM, like people just want to take, take, take. I mentioned the Domino's game and stuff, you know, like they could have easily sat me down and be like, okay, like pay us, pay us five bucks each. We just gave you a local Cuban experience, like pay us now. You know, you talk about what is the real Cuba? Is it, is it old Havana? Is it the school I went to? Is it some combination of the two? I think the real Cuba is just hardworking people who are finding joy in their lives in whatever way they can. I went down to this fishing dock soon after my day with Luis Fidel. That, like Later that day, after dinner and stuff, I went down to catch the sunset. I saw these fishermen, they were catching fish. I was around being a like silly tourist with my camera and they, they were just laughing and joking. And... The sun is going down. We got some local fishermen doing their jobs, doing their business. Oh. They weren't asking for money, they are just like, all right, here's someone who's coming here to experience our island, here's someone who's coming to experience our way of life. Like, I just, there was no barrier, there was no judgment, there was no like, this is us, this is you. They were just like, okay, come hang out with us. Here's our fish, take a photo of our fish. We don't like, you know. That was my impression. Those were the things that shocked me on my trip to Cuba. It's like simultaneously heartbreaking and beautiful because you know, you got this game of dominoes on the streets and you got the broken down buildings behind it and there's just a lot of emotions around a trip to Cuba. 
come with respect, come with an open mind, and you know, if you can, talk to some Cubans. You might be surprised about what you hear. Cuba, for all its differences, has people like any other. Soulful, beautiful, passionate people. And uh, I, won't, I, won't, I won't soon forget my trip to Cuba.